Hi! So this will likely be a shorter video, but today I wanted to share how to properly warm up before you start drawing and painting and how to avoid some of the common pitfalls a lot of artists fall into, myself included. So I've been doing art for over 10 years, four of which were formal art education, and in none of those was I taught why getting warmed up is important and how to do it beyond just do some like time gestures. Honestly, which is interesting to me because when you think about like professional athletes, they're always gonna warm up before they get onto like the court or the field. And also musicians, they are gonna warm up before playing and singing. And in the same way, I think it's important and useful for artists to do a warm up before they make art. I actually never did warm ups in the past. At least what I now consider a warm up, I would just do like a completely separate drawing to avoid the drawing I was planning to do. But since getting into the habit this last month or two, I found it to be seriously helpful. Not only does it help me get into a more focused flow state, but I actually am more motivated to make art. That's why I wanted to share today how to physically and mentally get warmed up for art. Now, obviously, if you are just planning to do some sketches and light doodling, you don't necessarily have to. But if you are going to do art for an extended period of time, I really recommend you get into the habit of doing this. First of all, guys, you need to stretch your wrists. I'm going to say it again. You need to stretch your wrists before you start drawing. As much as I love to joke that I am probably going to have arthritis and tendonitis by the ripe age of 24, I would rather be able to make art for a very long time without being in physical pain. And as artists, we do a lot of repetitive wrist movements, especially I feel like when you're working on a smaller scale or you have a smaller tablet, I find it kind of hard to draw from the shoulder in those circumstances. It really doesn't help that I don't have the most like ergonomic setup right now and uh, posture for that matter, but um, that's why it makes it so much more important. And what helped me get into that habit is something called habit stacking, where you essentially add a habit on top of another existing one. And so for me, I always listen to something before I start drawing. So whether that's like music or a YouTube video, I always go to turn that on. And when I do that, I use that as my cue to remind myself to stretch. And then I will actually use like the time quote or like the progress bar to time my stretches. I'll walk you through the stretches that I usually do, but I highly encourage you to look up videos online and by professionals and don't do anything that feels painful or uncomfortable, please. <laughs> All right, let's go. So first thing I do is I will put my arms up, pull my palms back. This is honestly enough of a stretch for me, but if you need a bit of a deeper stretch, you could gently pull your arm back like this. And you want to hold that for at least 10 to 15 seconds, no more than 30 though. And then the opposite. So pull your wrists down towards you. Again, you can gently pull it back if you need to. And then I like to do even a deeper stretch. So I'm going to make a fist and then I'm going to pull my palms down and you're going to get a bit of a deeper stretch that way. And it feels really good. And then I'm going to put my thumbs inside my fist and then I'm going to pull them out this way. Again, I'll hold it for a little bit. And then on days where my wrist is like especially sore, especially if I've been drawing for like the whole week, I like to put my hand against a wall and then pull my thumb out. And you should actually feel that up here. And it's a really nice stretch. You can kind of do it without a wall, but uh, it doesn't work as well. Then you want to warm up your fingers. So kind of like scrunch them, you know, about 10 times or so. And then I also like to do a back stretch because I am hunched over. So I'm gonna do a chest opener, interlace your fingers behind your back and pull your shoulders down and back. So that's gonna feel really nice. Hold that for a bit. If that's too much, you can also do about 10 of these. It's another way to open up your chest. Okay, and then last but not least, I like to end it with a neck stretch. So just gently tilt your head down and forward and then you're not pulling your head but you're gonna just rest your hand on top and you should get a really nice stretch down the length of your neck and then the opposite side and congrats you are warmed up 
I know I'm tempted sometimes to rush through these, especially when those like 15 to 30 seconds feels like the longest thing ever, but don't, it's, it's important. <laughs> Before I jump into the next thing, I, since I mentioned music, I think music can be a really powerful tool to set the mood for whatever you're doing. So it can be really useful if you kind of try to match it to the tone of your painting. So if I'm drawing something really big and dramatic, I might put some like intense classical music on. Or if I'm drawing my characters, I have playlists that I've made for each of them. And if you're just trying to like be loose, sketchy, have fun, maybe something more upbeat and energetic. Okay, so what should you be doing to warm up before you start your art? This is gonna sound super obvious, okay? But you should warm up with whatever you're planning to do. But I literally never did this. So like, if you're gonna be painting, you should warm up by doing painting. If you're gonna be doing line art or sketching, you should start with sketches. If you're gonna do like a really tricky anatomy drawing, you wanna do some targeted anatomy sketches. But what would always end up happening is I would get set up to do like a painting and then I would start a different drawing that I would want to eventually paint. So I would spend the entire time of my warm up doing this sketch and wouldn't get to the actual painting part of it. And so then I would have to transition from sketching to painting, which is kind of like two completely different approaches. So instead, when I do want to do painting, I will make an effort to jump right into that. Even if that means like tracing something or using an old line art, I am doing a focused study of you know, whatever I'm doing. This is a great time to do studies. I usually use this time to look at other artists and see how they're approaching things. I don't usually post my warm-ups, so this is definitely a space for me to explore and just kind of have fun with it. And that's actually another thing I wanted to mention is that your warm-up should be fun. You should look forward to it. And this is especially important when I'm working on maybe a really technically challenging piece where I'm a little bit hesitant to sit down and get into drawing it, but then I can kind of like bribe myself with the warm up. I could draw like a shitty meme of my characters before I jump into this key painting, right? Hi, Pop Up Julia here. I actually forgot to mention one tip that has been really useful for me. I have a post-it note in front of my tablet that says, girl, zoom out, because I have a tendency to want to zoom into my canvas. And when you're doing a warm up, you really want to keep it broad and you don't want to get bogged down in the details. And so when I do a warm up, I've tried to make sure I actually see the entirety of my digital canvas and kind of prevent myself from zooming in. I found this to be very helpful when it comes to looking at the bigger picture. And then as you're doing this, it is so important that you minimize any distractions, at least the ones that are within your control. So put your phone on do not disturb, make sure your notifications on like email or your laptop, iPad, whatever are turned off. Your brain physically cannot multitask. So every time you go to click on something like a different email or like a message, it takes your brain five to 10 minutes to get back into a focused flow state and it kind of ruins the point of a warm up. So then how long should you be doing your warm up for? I'd say the average person needs at least 20 minutes to get into some sort of flow, but I would definitely experiment with like what works for you. I take a bit longer, so I'd say it takes me about 25 to 40 minutes on any day to get myself into a good drawing flow. So the biggest problem that most artists run into is that it is so tempting to want to finish your warm-up sketch. I am very guilty of this, where a quick 20 minute sketch turns into four hours. <laughs> that happens because when you're doing a warm-up, you place less expectations on yourself. You're, you know, it's a warm-up. It doesn't really matter what happens with it. And as a result, you get into a better mindset and a better flow. And sometimes the sketch, the warm-up ends up looking better than something you would have done otherwise. So the key to preventing this is I have to set a timer. I have like a Pomodoro app on my laptop that I use for this and I set it to usually 40 minutes for me. And when that is done, I am done. I have to stop. And if I really like the thing I started working on, 
I will let myself use that as my warm up for the next day and kind of like chip away at it instead of being tempted to do the full thing. So if you made it to this point, congrats, you're ready to start drawing. I will take maybe a quick, you know, little break, maybe grab a, a drink to stay hydrated and then jump into the other art that I planned on making. Something I have yet to implement and I'm kind of curious if it will work. I've been reading a lot about the power of expectations and visualization and something I read that you can try is before you start doing the art, whatever you were planning on drawing or painting, actually imagine yourself doing that like from an outside perspective like visualize yourself drawing whatever you're drawing think of the contours think of how you're gonna approach it and imagine yourself being very successful at this and uh, see if that makes a difference i haven't tried this yet so we'll see how that goes if anyone else wants to try it let me know like if it helps I'd be, I'd be curious to know. But yeah, like I mentioned in the beginning, I have just found this so useful and that's why I wanted to share because I haven't really seen this information out there. Thank you so much again for watching. And if you did watch my last video and leave a comment, thank you so much. I was genuinely blown away by the response. Um, I really wasn't expecting that video to get more than like 200 people looking at it. And I'm, I'm really glad that it resonated. I truly read every comment and appreciate them so much and I'd be so happy if you wanted to join my little growing art community despite my slightly sporadic posting schedule but I do have other videos coming up and speaking of which today's makeup look is inspired by the Kyoshi Warriors which is a little clue to what I will be painting in my next video and I hope you can look forward to that and peace out! Thank you.